بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وی اسٹارٹ فائیو زیرو نائن زیرو چیپٹر نائنٹین ناؤ دس از نائنٹین پوائنٹ ٹو وچ وی آر گون ٹو ڈسکس ٹو ڈے دا نیوٹرین سائیکل وچ از کاربن اینڈ دا نائٹروجن سائیکل ان دا نیم آف اللہ دا موسٹ بینیفیشنٹ دا موسٹ مرسیفل ناؤ ان دا نیوٹرین سائیکل وی گون ٹو ڈسکس دا کاربن سائیکل اینڈ وی گون ٹو ڈسکس فوٹو سنسز ریسپائریشن فیڈنگ ڈی کمپوزیشن اینڈ فارمیشن آف فوسل فیولس اینڈ کمبسچن then the other is the nitrogen cycle in which we are going to discuss decomposition nitrification nitrogen fixation absorption of nitrate by plants production of amino acids and proteins feeding and digestion of proteins and denitrification and then outline the role of fungi and bacteria in decomposition in the in the older syllabus in 5090 both these cycles have been touched upon in this uh, ecology video too so you can watch this please go on the playlist and have a look at it you can even see this in that video you can also maybe understand it better if you watch both the videos now as you look at the carbon cycle the carbon cycle is basically very interesting is because you have three things uh, which return co2 to the atmosphere and that is r c d so what is r r is for respiration so animals respire return to the atmosphere carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and dissolved with the oceans plants respire and return it to the atmosphere right so respiration by animals and plants returns it to the atmosphere this is the r then c is combustion combustion is the return to co2 of the atmosphere so this is the c so you have a red cd player and then there is decomposition which is returning it to the atmosphere so this is the d so three arrows that go back to carbon dioxide in the atmosphere two for respiration so we have two for respiration animals respire return to the atmosphere plants respire return it to the atmosphere plants respire all the time but during the day there's more photosynthesis but the respiration is occurring all the time because plants are living now the fossil fuels combustion is returning carbon dioxide to the atmosphere when you burn petrol diesel in cars aeroplanes ships and when dead organic matter dead organic matter dead organic matter is decomposed dead trees dead leaves dead uh, bird so all that when is decomposed so it's going to be we having three three processes which return carbon dioxide to the atmosphere our respiration C combustion, D decomposition. So three processes which return carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Now there is only one process which removes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and that is photosynthesis. So photosynthesis will have to be going to plants because animals don't photosynthesize, fossil fuels don't photosynthesize. dead organic matter doesn't photosynthesize so you have to understand is that there is only one arrow which is that of photosynthesis which comes out of carbon dioxide in the air now whenever you are doing the mcqs that's a very good way of handling the mcqs so carbon dioxide is used up carbon dioxide in the air is used up in the process of photosynthesis and it will diffuse into the plants by because it's being used so diffusion is from a higher to a lower concentration and in the leaves it will be in a lower concentration if there's bright sunlight is a bright sunny day so there's going to be more photosynthesis if it's a cloudy day yes there'll be less photosynthesis so this is what you have to understand one process removes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere which is photosynthesis so this is the only process which removes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere the three processes which return it is one is respiration respiration by animals and plants then two is comb- combustion and three is decomposition so three processes that return carbon dioxide to the atmosphere now another thing that you've got to understand is that the co2 the co2 here in the air is going to be converted into c6h12o6 so this is the glucose molecule now what do we mean by this feeding and digestion and now that same glucose which is probably stored in plant as starch like you eat rice you eat wheat you eat roti you eat bread now that starch is converted in animals back to glucose and the glucose is respired 
and carbon dioxide is returned to the atmosphere and energy is released. In respiration, remember, energy is released, not energy is produced. We can't say that. That's wrong. That's wrong biological English. So when you're eating a potato, you're eating fries, or you're eating rice, or you're eating bread, or you're eating a piece of cake, well, it's starch. It's the carbon in the form of starch which is being converted back to glucose by digestion. So feeding and digestion. And then the glucose is respired and energy is released. Right? Now, the important point which we all have to remember is which we are getting very confused at. I see a lot of students very confused in it. Plants die. Fossil fuel. Now, if you remember in class 7 or 8, you study fossilization. That plants die, animals die, trees die, they become coal. Plants die, buried, remain buried for millions and millions of years and then they become fossil fuel. They become kerosene, oil, petrol, diesel. Death but decay is prevented. There is no decay and there are no microorganisms here. And it is right under a lot of pressure that this fossil fuel is made. So here also animals die, death but decay is prevented. So there are no microorganisms involved here. And this is the wording that I want you to use. Death but decay is prevented. Death but decay is prevented. So this results in fossilization. Coal, oil, peat. So now this coal and oil is going to be, this is going to be combustion and again carbon dioxide is going to be returned to the atmosphere. So the important thing you've got to understand is how is fossilization going to take place? Fossilization is going to take place under pressure. And all these trees and animals and dinosaurs remain buried for millions of years and become fossil fuel. And then of course the fossil fuel is burnt by us as humans in the cars and aeroplanes and uh, engines. And then, of course, it is called combustion. Now, let's look at another process. Animals, excretion, urea. I didn't say ejection. I said excretion, urea, urine, and death of animals. Similarly, plants, death of plants. So, death, excretion, and death. And this results in dead trees. There's another ordinary word for this is dead organic matter. Now, dead organic matter is going to be decomposed by bacteria and fungi. So, we're going to have bacteria and fungi decomposing it. That means the bacteria and fungi are going to be respiring and using up all these molecules, the biological molecules in dead trees and dead birds. And then they are going to use that and they are going to respire and the carbon dioxide is going to be released back into the atmosphere. So decomposition. Decomposition means bacteria and fungi are decomposing it. We have to do it a little later. I will do it in a little more detail. So decomposition is going to return the carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. So plants die. Animals die, death, dead organic matter and this dead organic matter is decomposed by bacteria and fungi and the carbon dioxide is released back to the atmosphere. Now what is decomposition? Decomposition is bacteria and fungi. So this is a bacteria and this lives on uh, say a dead bird. So the bacteria, this is a bacteria, I'm sorry the size of course is very irrelevant because bacteria would be a very tiny structure. Bacteria will release enzymes. The enzyme could be a protease. The protease, why protease am I talking about? Because the dead bird would have some meat. So there has to be some muscle in it. So the protein in the muscle would be converted to finally amino acids. And the amino acids will be then absorbed into the bacteria. And the bacteria will grow and then it will divide into two. So what did I say? I said bacteria and fungi release enzymes, extracellular digestion, microorganisms multiply. Of course, there are any ions, nitrate ions, magnesium ions. These will return to the, to the soil. And plants will take up the ions. And now we come to the nitrogen cycle. Now the nitrogen cycle is very important. It's very complicated. So I'm going to do it very slowly and I'm going to repeat myself a number of times. Now this is atmospheric nitrogen. 
that's no really no good to us actually because we can't use it but it can only be used in the form of nitrates in the soil now you can understand there's only one arrow which goes to it and that's lightning please understand the word is lightning l i g h t n i n g not lighting so lightning is the process which is going to convert in the lightning you see what happens during lightning there is nitrogen in the air and there is oxygen in the air and that forms nitrous oxide and that is also in water to form hno3 nitric acid and then the nitrates goes into the soil so nitrogen and oxygen in the air combine because in lightning there is an electrical current and that electrical current results in the catalysis of nitrogen and oxygen forming nitrous oxide then hno3 and then nitrates in the soil so we have nitrates in the soil so lightning converts the atmospheric nitrogen to nitrates in the soil now these nitrates are taken up by so absorption by roots the nitrate ions are taken by active transport by the roots and then these nitrate ions the nitrate ions no3 the nitrate ions combine with the glucose c6h12o6 and it forms an amino acid and then the amino acids are converted into proteins so this becomes protein in plants the nitrate ion absorbed by the roots becomes protein in plants now this is the plants that we eat like you eat peas and you eat beans and you eat uh, nuts and all so feeding and digestion and then it becomes amino acids in our body and then the amino acids are used to make a hemoglobin molecule or maybe the amino acids are used to make a pepsin molecule or the amino acids are used to make an insulin molecule so protein in animals then we have excretion and then we have this is the nitrogenous waste then we have plants die animals die and we have dead protein and dead organisms dead bird dead tree dead elephant and then we have the putrefying bacteria so the dead animals dead plants and the nitrogenous waste are converted into ammonia ammonia is a very foul smelling gas that is why you see we have whenever there is something rotting if there is an animal dead animal then that makes a very uh, nasty smell so it's a very pungent smell ammonia so we have ammonia which is the decomposition of dead animals and plants and of the nitrogenous waste and then ammonia now this is the point that you've got to understand is that the ammonia ammonia is converted by chemical combination into ammonium compound so this is not any bacteria involved it's just chemical combination ammonium nitrate ammonium phosphate ammonium carbonate now this ammonia is converted into nitrites and this is done by bacteria nitrifying bacteria then the nitrites are converted into nitrates and this is again a type of nitrifying bacteria so there are two types of nitrifying bacteria one which can convert ammonium to nitrites and one which converts nitrites to nitrates now what we need to understand is that this ammonium compounds two nitrites this is also nitrifying bacteria and then nitrites to nitrates is also a type of nitrifying bacteria so this is called nitrification this is called nitrification now if you look at your syllabus it says here decomposition of plant and animal proteins to ammonium ions and then nitrification and then the third one is nitrogen fixation by lightning and bacteria and absorption of nitrate ions by plants then the production of amino acids and proteins then the feeding and digestion of proteins and of course this is denitrification so if you know these points then you can understand them in the same manner in which they are given in the syllabus now let's go back here now the important one which we have not talked about is this one this is the one which is going in the 
reverse direction what is in the reverse direction this is called denitrification what is denitrification is that the nitrates in the soil so nitrates no3 is converted to n atmospheric nitrogen nitrogen gas now these are the enemies of farmers and they live in waterlogged soils they lived in waterlogged soils so denitrifying bacteria are bad why they are bad because the atmospheric nitrogen cannot be used by plants the roots have to absorb the nitrates from the soil so this is the denitrification which is bad and which which in fact results when there is a flooding and there's water uh, water logging then these denitrifying bacteria which are anaerobic they flourish and then they will convert the nitrates into nitrogen gas now these are not good for the farmers these are not very good for the farmers then the other point which is in your syllabus is lightning which is a form of nitrogen fixation and a form of bacteria nitrogen fixing bacteria in leguminous plants so this is the nitrogen fixation so lightning is also a nitrogen fixation and nitrogen fixing bacteria present in leguminous plants rhizobium these convert the pro these convert the atmospheric nitrogen into protein in green plants so lightning converts the nitrogen into nitrates and the nitrogen fixing bacteria convert the nitrogen into protein in plants now we will discuss 19.3 ecosystems and biodiversity describe a population as a group of organism of one species living in the same area at the same time like we say population of pakistan is whatever 10 million or whatever and it is uh, the number of people the human beings young old everybody who live in pakistan in 2022 describe a community of all the populations that different species in an ecosystem so we've got to know the meaning of population community ecosystem then describe ecosystem as a unit containing the community of organisms all the living organism plants and animals and their environment interacting together like if they pond then the water in the pond if there's soil then the soil so all of that interacting with each other then describe biodiversity as the number of different species that live in an area then identify and state the factors affecting the rate of population growth for a population of an organism limited to food supply competition predation and disease so four things food supply competition predation and disease and then the last is understand the growth of the human population in increasing the demand for global resources now let's look at the de definitions so organism individual living thing so a bison is an organism uh, so that's an organism population is a group of organism of one type that live in the same area all the same species community population that live together in a defined area so we've got the vegetation we've got the animals we've got different animals birds we've got different so we've got that is called community so that is all the living populations that live together so population of birds population of bison population of elephants you can't say population of insects it has to be a specific like population of mosquitoes uh, now ecosystem is totally something different is community and is it's the community means this community the population of all the living organisms of all the plants and animals and the non living surroundings which interact with each other so we've got all these different animals then we've got the grass we've got the stream then we've got the rocks we've got the air and all this interacting is called an ecosystem and then of course biosphere biosphere the part of the earth that contains all the ecosystems another uh just to repeat individual living things are called organisms many organism of one species living in one area is called population many different populations living in one area is called community so community with all the all the living organism which means all the plants and the animals then all the plants and the animals that is community together with the non living component air water soil etc in an ecosystem and all the ecosystems of the earth will make up the biosphere so population is only of one specific species community is all the animals all the plants all the trees all the grass everything in it is called community
Then we come to the next definition is what is biodiversity? The wide range of variations among the living organisms of the world is termed as biodiversity steps. One, diversity in ecosystems, diversity within species and diversity between species. The number and variety of plants, animals and other organisms that exist in an ecosystem is known as biodiversity. The number and variety of plants, animals and other organisms. It is a measure of the variety of organisms present in different ecosystems. The richness of biodiversity depends upon the climatic conditions and the area of the region. Biodiversity is the result of 3.5 billion years of evolution. Now you can see a picture of high biodiversity and low biodiversity. So there are only two types of trees here, so it's low biodiversity. Here there are many other different types. So if one becomes extinct, the other will still survive. Lots of animals here, lesser number of uh, different animals, lesser number of trees here on this side, lesser type. There only there are only there are trees, but they only have two types or one type. So here we have a larger uh, range of there are many more plants, there are many different varieties of plants, there are many different animals. So high biodiversity. Now the rate of growth of a population of an organism is dependent on four factors. Number one, food supply. If you look at the population of deers, then they would be dependent on the grass which is available there. And throughout the year, because it will decrease during the winter and it will increase during the summers. Then competition for food, competition for meat. Then predation by other animals. Like if there are too many lions or there are too many tigers and they are eating up the deers. So how many are there which are going to predate on this animal like the deer population or the rabbit population? What are the animals that are going to predate? Predation. Then disease. If there is a disease which kills 50% of the population, well then we have a problem. Sometimes some viral diseases kill lots and lots of birds, like the bird flu, that kill many, many birds in very large numbers. So only the ones which were resistant to it would have survived. And then of course a new, then growth will start after that. So disease. So number one, food supply. Number two, competition for food and mate. Number three, predation. And number four, disease. So you have to remember these points, how the rate of growth of a population of an organism is uh, the limit. These are the limiting factors. Now, as we can see, there's the growth of the human population is phenomenal. Why is it phenomenal? Because there's less disease now. And people are living longer. So growth of the human population has increased the demand on global resources. Now for what? Number one, for food. Number two, for materials for construction like sand, gravel, limestone and metals. So what we need to do is now we need to focus on recycling so that we do not exhaust the global resources. Then we're cutting down natural habitats to clear areas for buildings. So that should also be thought in mind that we should not clear so many natural habitats because then, uh, you know, the natural habitats are home for many, many species. And so we're going to result in a decrease in biodiversity and that should not happen. Now this completes your... Uh, 19.3 and we will continue in the next chapter in the next video we will continue 19.4 and 19.5